There are three trends in the marketplace that I want to break down for you ending on June 30th. So the first half of the year, it's over, it's done, it's in the books. And I'm going to tell you what's going on with showing activity, inventory, and prices in the greater Philadelphia area next. So if you like what you hear, you get some value out of this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. And if you want to schedule a call with our team about your real estate needs and goals based on this information I'm going to share, you can do that with the link in the comments. So I'm a big believer in following the lead indicators, meaning the things that are going on right now, not the data from 60 days or 90 days ago, which is what a lot of experts do. So there are three numbers I've been paying very close attention to, and we're going to break them down at the national level for some, as well as the local level for every single one of them. And the first is new listing data. This has been one of the biggest pain points for buyers and sellers, and even real estate agents. A lot of agents have said only if there's more inventory, everything would be great. Well, now we've got more inventory and new listings data is growing. So to give you an idea nationally where we are, um, we're right around that seasonal peak that we see every year. And the new listings data for this past week, nationally, for the last three years, 2024, we saw 70,606 new homes come to the market this past week. We saw 61,749 come to the market in 2023, so about 10,000 more. And in 2022, we saw 90,741 new listings. I got a chart here. Nick's going to pop up. You can see where we are trending right now over the past couple years to get some perspective here that we're seeing more inventory than last year, but not quite the same as we saw in 2022. Now, what's notable is we saw a big drop off at the end of 2022 when you look at this chart here. So new listings data is growing. We're also seeing coming soon pre-listings growing ahead of the 2023 pace and below the 2022 pace. We're going to share that number as well, just so you can kind of get an idea of what the forward-looking new listings data is going to be. And lastly, what I'm going to share with you is what's going on in the greater Philadelphia area. So this isn't just Pennsylvania. This includes uh, the suburban counties, Chester, Delaware, Montgomery, Bucks, Philadelphia, and then Mercer, Burlington, Camden, and Gloucester County, New Jersey, and Newcastle and Kent counties in Delaware. So the, the real metro area, not just the uh, greater Philadelphia area or in Pennsylvania. And what we saw is that new listings grew by 12.8% compared to the same time a year ago. And <clears throat> what we're also seeing is the number of active listings. So the total supply is 18.8% higher. That means that there's some homes aren't selling right away. It's not a one-for-one -one trade off like we saw in 2022. So listings are growing. So what does this mean for people that are thinking about buying or selling? So if I'm a seller, I'm looking at this saying inventory is growing. Supply is growing as well. It's not just new listings, but they're, they're hanging on the market a little longer. And that means that we're going to probably continue to see this trend because it's been going on a while now. When you look at the trend lines, inventory is growing. That means buyers have more options than they used to. So that means it could take longer to get a home sold. And the average days on market still trending at less than a month in the suburbs and just over 60 days in the city of Philadelphia. So it's not a horrible number, but we're seeing inventory grow. So it's not ultra low anymore, still below that even market, which is considered a six month supply. If I'm a buyer, what I'm noticing is days on market. I'm paying very close attention to this data point. 10, 11, 12, 13 days on market. That's where there's an opportunity to go in and make an offer. So these trends around inventory are very critical. So that gets me to statistic number two, which is pricing. And what we're seeing happening with pricing through the month of May, sale prices are up 6.7% compared to last year in the greater Philadelphia metro area. So that same sample size that I shared with you. So even though inventory is growing, we're not seeing pricing come down like we are in other parts of the country. What we're seeing right now for the listing prices, and this comes right from the bright MLS uh, weekly and monthly reports that drop, which have a lot of great data. The median listing price that we're seeing right now is at 11.6% higher than where it was last year. So we'll obviously have the numbers uh, for the end of the month. Uh, once everything kind of settles out, we get the data updated. We're not seeing pricing back off. And what we're also seeing from a price adjustment standpoint is that 
we are seeing more homes make an adjustment to their price while they're on the market. We're at 38% of all active listings nationally in 2024 are seeing a price adjustment. 32% was the number in 2023 and 31% in 2022. So we're seeing that more sellers are making a price adjustment. And what that means is that not that the market's going down, but sellers are getting more realistic more quickly. And we're also seeing demand start to wane a little bit. And that's also noticed with the inventory growth that we're seeing. And the third statistic is going to be number of showings, right? That, that's a real indicator of what demand is. And number of showings, according to Bright MLS. So again, these are Bright MLS numbers. These aren't mine. They were down over 12% compared to this time last year through the end of May. So we're seeing less people look at homes. We're seeing more homes come to the market. And we're still seeing prices increase, but more adjustments that are happening. So there's a lot to unpack here. For sellers, this is a sign that the market is normalizing. This is what the market was like pre-pandemic. And knowing that, there's really three strategies to price a home. Price it aspirational too high and hope that someone's going to come in with an offer. You price it right where you think it's going to sell for, with the realistic number, if you will. Or you price it at the auction price number, hoping that people are going to bid above. With showings declining and seeing that demand is stabilizing a little bit, I would be pricing it right at value. That's going to typically give you the best activity and get the people that are the most serious about the home. So that's what I'm looking at if I'm a seller. And I'm also thinking about moving my time frame up so I'm not waiting till down the line when inventory grows further and maybe day zone market increases more. For a buyer, I'm looking at this as we've got stable rates. I've got more inventory. I've got an opportunity to make an offer here, maybe finesse a deal and get some contingencies attached to it. And I'd be monitoring the market closely for that right opportunity. All these stats, they give you a path here to make your real estate goals and decisions happen. So if you need any advice, click on the link in the comments to schedule a time to talk.